mercy to bless me by the indwellingness of your Holy Spirit, and strengthen me as I now proclaim your holy gospel. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us listen to the holy gospel according to St. Mark, beginning with chapter 14, verse 12. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared for the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who gives bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go, just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the mouth of all. Here ends the Holy Gospel, the Holy Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. treasure in our life. 
That leads me to the body and blood of Christ about what it is that we treasure and we hold on to in our own life. The Holy Eucharist is probably one of the most controversial celebrations or rites within the church today. That being said, the reason why it is controversial is because we all know that even at the Protestant Reformation with Martin Luther in the year 1517, he still, even though after the Reformation and then they proclaimed a Lutheran church after him, they still celebrate, the Lutherans to this day, still celebrate the liturgy. And they still recognize the real presence of Jesus in the bread and wine as the body and blood of Christ. In the year 1529 and 1537, when King Henry VIII and the Church of England decided to break away from us to continue this Protestant Reformation, the Anglicans too celebrate the same Eucharistic celebration. They take a little bit of a different twist on the real presence of Christ, but nonetheless they still have that liturgy, that component of acknowledging the real presence of Christ. Through the centuries, and as time has evolved and denominations started breaking away one from another, the sacrament of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was reduced more than just to symbolism. It ended up becoming symbolic for many of these Christian denominations. The church in the beginning, when Christ founded the church, there was one church, it's called the Universal Church, the one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, that you will even find the Protestants acknowledged through the Apostle and the Nicene Creed, the Nicene Creed being created in the year 325. And through that Nicene Creed, it comes the, from the Apostles' Creed, it says, I believe in the one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, meaning the Universal Church. So with that being said, as time evolved and these other churches started breaking away, still acknowledging the Apostles and the Nicene Creed, they started reducing the sacraments. Most churches no longer consider, Christian denominations no longer consider there to be seven sacraments of the church that were instituted by Christ. Rather, they began to call them ordinances and acknowledge two, baptism and the celebration of the Lord's Supper. But the celebration of the Lord's Supper was reduced again to mere symbology. It was symbolism. It was bread and it was wine. Because they got the interpretation where it said in one of the the sacred scriptures, it says, do this in remembrance of me. Well, in the original Greek and Hebrew language, or in the original Greek act, rather, when it said, do this in remembrance of me, is not saying in the same ideological thinking that we're thinking about, just to remember. It actually means not only to remember, but it also says take part in the sacrifice. So when we have the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the form of mere bread and wine, it becomes the actual body and blood of Jesus. How does that happen? I'll explain that to you here in just a minute. First, we have to describe what a sacrament is. A sacrament in the church is a visible sign of an outward action. It also becomes an inward action. In other words, when I say an outward action, we see it happening. We see it taking place. But when we consume the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, that inward action permeates our very soul. And that's what makes the sacrament. So it's an outward sign of an inward action. So too with our baptism. Some people claim that when they're baptized, they don't feel any different. Some do. Some, when they receive the waters of baptism, they feel a heightened part of their psyche or of their body or their soul has transformed them. Others, they don't. They just, oh, well, I got baptized. And that, all that part is because they have yet to learn to fully accept and believe in what Jesus is actually doing. Remember, we as human beings live off of what we call reality. We have to use our senses by touching and feeling in order to acknowledge that something is real. Jesus knew this, and this is why Jesus has the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why he instituted that. So that we would have something to remember him by. More than just remembering, but actually realizing he's actually here with us. So if we look at the scriptures this morning, first, let's go back to that. Now the Passover and the feast of the unleavened bread 
were only two days away, and the chief priest and the teachers of the law were working. I'm in the wrong spot here. Forgive me. On the first day of the feast, here we go, of the love and love and bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the lamb, Jesus and his disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparation for you to eat the Passover? Now, we're all familiar with the story of the Passover. All right. And we also know that they celebrate, in order, the Jewish people, in order to celebrate the Passover, they celebrate the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. With that is also the sacrificial lamb, the lamb that was sacrificed, so that blood would be sprinkled around. Isn't it fitting that Jesus is going to celebrate the Last Supper on the Feast, on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, on the night in which a lamb was sacrificed? Remember I talked about animals earlier? Mm -hmm. Here Jesus now becomes, through symbolism, Jesus now becomes, anytime you see a lamb, that represents Jesus. Jesus is the Lamb of God. We say this even during our Eucharistic celebration. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. And we respond by saying, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the words and I shall be healed. So Jesus now becomes the sacrificial lamb. He is the lamb that was slain. His blood was shed for all of humanity. So here, Jesus is preparing for this moment of the feast of the unleavened bread. Then if we read in verse 13, So he sent two of disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room? Where may I eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left and went into the city of Balthage, just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. So what we see here is that the disciples themselves still the disciples knew that they were going to be losing their Lord. They knew that there was going to be a point in time where Jesus was no longer going to be with them. But they were still wondering, what are these things that Jesus is talking about? We're going to go here to celebrate the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. They think, the disciples, that they're celebrating that. But Jesus is saying, we're going to go, I'm the Lamb. I'm the new Lamb. And we're going to go and we're going to celebrate what I'm going to leave you in remembrance, not more than just remembrance. I don't like using that word, but that's what it ends up being. Remembrance of me, which is going to be of me in the reality. That's what Jesus is going to be celebrating. So, the disciples are waiting when they find that Jesus has already had everything foretold for them, that everything was prepared. Now, you will notice that the next part, it says, I lost my place here. The disciples went and said, okay, when evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve, and while they were reclining at the table eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were sad, and one by one said to him, surely not I, is not of the twelve, is it one of the twelve, he replied, the one who dips his bread in the bowl with me, the son of man, will go up as it is written about him. But well, woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke, and I'll finish that here in a minute. You will notice that this is right before Jesus was handed over. We all know that. That was right before he was handed over to be crucified. And we all know who the betrayer is, Judas. But nonetheless, you also notice that all the disciples in this pericope and these perkipes here have all said, surely it's not I, surely it's not I. They all began to question themselves. See, they began to have not doubt, but were uncertain as to who this Lord Jesus was. Even though that they went with him in their ministry, his ministry with him, and they got to know him. But see, they're still new in their faith as well, trying to figure out who Jesus really is. And it isn't until after Jesus is crucified that they come to realize that he is the Son of God. So they're all casting a little bit of doubts in themselves, having these little doubts and saying, surely it's not I, it's not I. 
But we know that one does. And that one does get handed over, or hands over Christ. And he himself ends up taking his own life. Now here we come to the Eucharistic celebration. And it's fitting because you can see how everything is falling into place. And how everything becomes visual and a reality. Not only for them at that time, but for us as well. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to the disciples saying, take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks, offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them, I tell you the truth, I will not drink it again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went to the Mount of Olives. Now you will notice that it says, Jesus says, take this, this is my blood of the covenant. Now we all know what the covenant is. When Moses handed down the Ten Commandments, that was a covenant. And now we have a covenant by the shedding of Jesus' blood, saying that we will no longer have death, but eternal life. We will no longer be sitting in our sin, but rather we will receive reconciliation. 